Last year's Pixel 7 Pro was one of my favorite phones of the year. Today, we're gonna find out if this year's model, the Pixel 8 Pro, is truly an improvement worth purchasing. Before we jump into the review, I do want to go over some of the basic information here. This is the Pixel 8 Pro. The model I was sent by Google for review is the porcelain model. Would have been cool if they had sent me the bay version or even the obsidian version. Although, as they say, beggars can't be choosers, so I will take what I can get. We are looking at $999 for the base model. That's 128 gigabytes of storage. And as you can see, 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM. This thing also does have a very large 6.7 inch display. It's 20 by 9, 1344 by 2992 resolution, 489 PPU. And it can go between one hertz and 120 hertz, which should indeed help with that battery life giving you the smooth look of 120 hertz but allowing you to go all the way down to one if nothing's really happening on the screen it also has a display that is up to 1600 nits hdr and 2400 nits peak brightness we're going to talk about that brightness later on in the video as for the processor it's not a snapdragon it is the tensor g3 which is google's own customized chip which is produced by samsung guys that's about all we're going to talk about in regard to specs now let's take a look at that phone so this is the Pixel 8 Pro. As you can see, Google is keeping that same visor design as they have been using for the last few years, except now all three cameras are sort of placed inside this one oval camera cutout, which is a different color than the metal visor itself. We have an LED flash up here and then a temperature sensor, which to be honest, I find to be almost completely useless. I don't think I'm going to talk about it very much in this video. You can check the temperature of things. I don't know why you would want to do that. Of course, we do have a standard telephoto and an ultra wide lens. We'll talk about the cameras a bit more in depth a little bit later. Overall though, I think that this thing does have a really nice feel in the hand. It does feel very, very premium. I like the back now is a matte texture, which means no fingerprints. How good is that? It is still extremely slippery. I would advise for anyone that doesn't have massive hands, you're probably going to want to have a case on this thing because it's just going to slide around in your hand too much. It does have a flat display now, which I also really, really like. I do not like curved displays, so good on you, Google, for changing that. Power button here, volume rockers there, USB-C and some speakers on the bottom. On the top, nothing, a millimeter wave antenna and a probably microphone there. It does have an amplified earpiece for stereo sound, and on this side is where your SIM tray is. I do have a screen protector on mine, so if you see dust accumulating up there at the top, that is what that is from. It's from a tempered glass screen protector. As you can see, the fingerprint scanner is still in screen, and it is still an optical fingerprint scanner, which means that some people probably won't like it to me, the only issue I have with an optical scanner is that if you're using it in the dark, it's very, very bright. Otherwise, I find it to be just as reliable as it was on the Pixel 7 Pro where I did not really have any problems. I am a sucker for power button mounted fingerprint scanners though. Although on this device, that might have been hard because it would have required a reach because this thing is absolutely gargantuan. Let me show it to you next to my Pixel Fold, which I am very used to using at this point. We'll wake it up as well. Look at the size difference there. I mean, I've gotten really used to, like I said, using this. So this thing feels massive, massive, massive. And I'm basically having no choice but to employ the one-handed mode to be able to use this device in some situations. In addition to that fingerprint scanner, though, we also do have face unlock, which is very, very quick and seemingly quite accurate. It's also capable of logging me into things like banking applications, which I must admit is kind of surprising and fairly useful. So we're gonna try something different as we go through this video, something I don't typically do. I'm gonna actually give you numbered scores for different categories. So for the category of hardware itself, okay, and I'm talking about the build quality, the design, the feel, the hardware of this device. Not specifications, right? <laughs> Not performance, hardware. I would give this thing a solid 9 out of 10. It is very, very good. It is one of the more premium feeling devices that I have. There's no creaking. There's no bending. It feels rock solid. Let's talk about the screen now because it is something that I think deserves its own section. The screen is very, very good. It has been improved dramatically 
over the Pixel 7 Pro. It is so very bright. I love the fact that it can go all the way down to one hertz to save battery life. I wish it was smaller, right? It's still enormous, but it is extremely good. It is one of the best displays. It might be the best display right now that I have in the house. The S23 Ultra would probably be the only one that would be anywhere close, and at least on paper, this should be brighter. Now, in practice, I will tell you that's not necessarily been my experience. As you can see, it is right there with the S23 Ultra. I actually left both of these phones out in direct sunlight for several minutes, and it actually maintained its peak brightness for quite a long time. Now, it's possible that in an HDR setting, so plain HDR content, it might actually go a little bit brighter and then beat out the S23 Ultra, but in normal, just outside, day-to-day, it is just as readable as that S23 Ultra, and in fact, it might even be more readable, which is honestly extremely impressive considering the gulf of distance between the 7 Pro and the S23 Ultra. Google has stepped up their display game with their new Actua display in an absolutely massive way. For the screen, I'm going to give that a score, just like the hardware, of a 9 out of 10. It's outstanding. So, of course, I did mention that we do have stereo sound coming from this amplified earpiece and then these bottom firing speakers. Let's take a quick listen to an audio sample, and then I'll tell you what I think about these speakers. Overall, I think that they actually sound really quite nice. They do distort just a little bit when they are at maximum volume, like you may be able to hear there, but the clarity is pretty solid. Bass is okay. And of course, they do get fairly loud. For the speakers, I'm going to go with a rather solid 8 out of 10. So now let's move on and talk about the software on the device. And I think more so than ever, year over year, this becomes more and more of a subjective thing because whether it's a Samsung device, a Google device, whatever it might be, the software in all of these modern phones has gotten to a place where they're all pretty darn good. But the Pixel experience is definitely its own experience. The look, the feel, the animations, and those software features are big differentiating factors that you're either going to be into or you're not going to like the aesthetic, the style of. Now, for me, they are good things. I like the way that the Pixel devices look and behave and feel. But again, this is subjective. So take that into account as we're going forward. My experience with the software has been pretty much outstanding. All of these software features that are being added in, almost all of them are things that I use all the time. I love having access to now playing. See what music is going on in the world around me is awesome. Some of these new assistant features, like being able to summarize a web page or have a web page be read to me, I find to be absolutely incredibly useful. The photo editing features, right? Things like Best Take. I've actually already used Best Take twice, which kind of surprises me. I didn't really think it was going to be that useful to me, but I'm already using it and it works really well. And it makes for a great parlor trick. Show your friends and family and watch their jaws hit the floor as you change the faces and the pictures you took of the group. It's a lot of fun, honestly, and it works shockingly well. I've talked about Magic Editor. It's one of the most mind-blowing things I've ever seen a phone do. To me, this software on the Pixel 8 Pro is absolutely outstanding, not just because of all of these incredible features, which you just don't have access to on other devices, and I really like those things, but also just because of how smooth it is. This thing just flies around the operating system, and people love to talk about how the Tensor G3 isn't as powerful as some of the Snapdragon processors, and that's absolutely true. But these devices feel so very optimized. When I pick up my S23 Ultra and I compare it to the Pixel 8 Pro, I can't tell that the Pixel 8 Pro has the weaker processor. In fact, I will probably tell you that it feels like the Pixel 8 Pro is snappier. It's more responsive. It's smoother. There are fewer glitches and bugs in the animations. It just feels so incredibly polished and rock solid. We're reaching that level that, you know, when I watch people use their iPhones, that level of polish, like I feel like we're slowly creeping into that direction. This device's software is outstanding. It may be one of the best parts. It probably is the best part of this device. The hardware is great now, right? The hardware is much better than it has ever been in the Pixel line, but the software is still by far the biggest selling feature of this device, and that's why I've got to give it a 9.5 out of 10.
Now, when it comes to performance, things can get a little bit tricky because you have to decide if you're going to separate gaming from the performance section. And I think for this review, that makes the most sense. That's what I'm going to do. You can buy a laptop that is very good in terms of performance. Maybe it's great at all sorts of tasks, but it's not good at gaming. That doesn't mean it doesn't have good performance because to me, gaming is its own thing. And that's kind of where the Pixel 8 Pro is. Like I said earlier, in day-to-day -day tasks, opening up the apps that you're going to be using most of the time, loading up multimedia apps, loading up even productivity apps or even a video editor and, and rendering video files, it's going to perform very, very well. Now, that being said, it does still get a little bit warm. I've not had any true overheating instances where some functionality was degraded or shut down. It just simply feels warm in the hand. If I add all that up, I would say that the performance is probably somewhere around an 8.5 out of 10. Now, if we switch gears and talk specifically about gaming, things are going to degrade quite a bit more. If you look at this footage here of Genshin Impact, with the settings cranked all the way up, you can see we're getting in the high 30 FPS up to the low 40s. And of course, there are phones that are going to do this much, much better and get you that much higher frame rate and with probably lower temperatures as well. So for gaming, we're going to be dropping this down to a 6 out of 10. So let's talk about battery life now on the Pixel 8 Pro. My experience has been pretty decent. Now, I do want to point out that, of course, I am running at 120 hertz and I've also changed it to the maximum resolution. I could drop it back down to where it comes stock and potentially save some battery life that way, but I wanted to take advantage of the full high resolution screen. Why not? It's there. Let's turn it on. And to be honest, it's been fine. I'm getting somewhere in the six, seven, eight hours of screen on time per charge on this device. Now, I know that is an extremely subjective thing because it, that can vary so wildly, right? Like if you're out someplace with really poor cellular coverage, your battery life is going to suffer. Are you just watching YouTube videos for six hours or are you gaming for six hours? This stuff can vary a ton. So I'm just going to try to describe to you what my normal day looks like and hopefully that kind of helps give you an idea. Typically, I'm coming off the charger sometime around 6 a.m. I'm typically home for a lot of the day, but I do go out and then use that 5G service for you know different parts of the day. I would say probably two, maybe three hours of the day is spent on 5G. The rest is going to be on my Wi-Fi here at the house, which is definitely going to benefit me. I'm not gaming on this device at all. I don't use phones for gaming, so that's also probably going to help aid the battery life a bit. Primary things are more basic things like reading news stories, scrolling through social media, maybe watching some videos here or there. A lot of the times it's YouTube, but it's turned off and it's in my pocket. So I'm streaming audio and things like that, streaming YouTube music there and also in my car. And like I said, I'm getting through a full day, 6 a.m. all the way till I'm going to bed, plugging the thing in 9, 9 o'clock with no problem at all. It's not like the battery king. Like I'm not going to bed with half my battery left, right? Like it's less than that, but I'm not going dead until, you know, it will be into the next day. And that's pretty much exactly where it was with the Pixel 7 Pro. So for me, not a huge change in battery life, but the good news is I didn't have a problem with the Pixel 7 Pro's battery life. I definitely don't have a problem with the Pixel 8 Pro's battery life. I do wish it charged a little bit faster than it actually does. I mean, who wouldn't want crazy fast charging if it's available? I do think it charges fast enough, but just like the battery life, it's not the you know battery champ, it's not the charging champ. It's just in that, hey, I don't have a problem territory. And that's why I would give battery lumping them with charging into the same category. I would give them both about a 7.5 out of 10. Last but not least, we got to talk about that camera setup on the Pixel 8 Pro. If you're buying a Pixel, the camera is almost certainly a big reason why you are buying this phone. And for the 8 Pro, I do think it's only a small step up over the 7 Pro in terms of just the straight up imaging. Just like before, the pictures you're going to get are very detailed. The colors are more accurate, less saturated than you might be getting from a Samsung device. Perhaps more than ever, whether you're in the ultra wide or that 5X telephoto, the camera is going to be delivering very similar results in terms of overall quality. You don't really feel like, well, I'm going to use my ultra wide. That means I'm going to get a far worse photo. It still is going to look pretty darn good. It is a fairly wide ultra wide as well 
which is certainly a welcome thing for me. Portrait mode, I feel like looks quite solid again this year. We actually just used the 7 Pro to take some anniversary photos and loved it. And I think the 8 Pro would potentially be even a little bit better than that. You finally have access to a full Pro mode that will let you actually mess around with ISO and shutter speed and your manual focus and things like that, which I think is a great addition to the Pixel camera experience. Their low light mode called Night Sight is still just as good as ever. I can show you some low light photos that you're probably gonna think were taken in normal lighting, but in fact, they were in the dark. In terms of video performance, I think that they've taken a step in the right direction as well. Hopefully when Video Boost launches in December, things are gonna take another giant leap forward. I still don't think video performance is as good as Apple or Samsung but it's definitely getting better. And other side features like blur, which is basically portrait mode video, I think is actually getting to the point that I would maybe even use it now. I think it looks pretty strikingly good. Let's do a quick video sample here, filming 4K 60 FPS. We'll go through all the different lenses. So we're on the ultra wide lens here. I think it does look pretty nice if we go into the primary sensor. Colors are looking pretty good. Stability is, you know, your typical Google stability. Even if we jump to the 2X optical, I think that we're still mostly usable. And now let's jump into that 5X optical and we're filming with that now. And in particular, filming with this, it does kind of have this almost sticky thing going on where it wants to kind of stay put and then it jumps. So filming with the 5x optical maybe not the best thing in the world definitely kind of has like a jittery thing going on but still i would say video performance has improved and i would say i can actually see myself now potentially using this for you know some of my b-roll instead of the s23 ultra i could absolutely see myself using this phone to shoot some of this b-roll now which is uh, something I probably wouldn't have done with the Pixel 7 Pro. To me, the Pixel photography experience is absolutely one of the best that you can have. And it is because of this that I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10. All in all, the Pixel 8 Pro does feel like the most complete product that Google has made. The level of software polish is top tier. The level of hardware polish now is reaching that level as well. There are very few things that I feel like hold this device back for some people. Gaming performance will be one thing for some people. We would like to see better GPU performance, better thermals as well are something that we still need to have with this device. I'd also love to see it charge a little bit faster. Can we get to the 45 watts of the S23 Ultra? I think that should be doable again if we can get these thermals under a little bit more control. Don't get me wrong, it's not overheating for me, but it is often a little bit warm to the touch. And that does speak to a little bit of inefficiency that could be reined in. But this device simply gets so very much absolutely right. I can recommend it quite highly. For $9.99, you know, you compare it to some of these other flagships that are more than $1,000 still, I think this still represents a fairly decent bargain. I wish it was still $8.99, but it's $9.99, and honestly, if you're buying a flagship, it's probably still worth it because it's just really, really good, and it's really, really smart, and those smarts for me take it over the top when compared to some other phones. So there you go, guys. Those are my thoughts on the Pixel 8 Pro. I do need to say that this device was provided to me by Google as I am a member of Team Pixel. However, they are seeing this review at the same time as everyone else. They have no early copy, no editorial input, and no money changed hands for the production of this video. If you would like to purchase the Pixel 8 Pro, you can use one of my links down below. They will be labeled appropriately, and some of them will be commission-earning links that will help support the channel. So definitely check that out if you're in the market for a new top tier flagship smartphone. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friend.